Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the Europa Conference League final preview. The first one. We have is the first ever final and for that reason I'm actually quite excited about it. And uh, as we will see when we talk a little bit about the clubs, we not only have I think a really really good final, but I also both teams started in the Conference League. They had to qualify for the group stage, which is something I really like about this comp com com competition. You not falling, um, you you have to qualify for it. Yes, if you're in the Europa League playoff uh, and you lose there, you go fall into the Conference League, but you have to qualify. There are no fixed spots. And I think for the Europa League, the same thing. So this is something I really, really, really enjoy this one. As I said, I think we have also two really interesting teams in there and while I think it is easy to see these guys because they're from the big league Roma as the favorites and I'm wearing Roma because I only have one Feyenoord shirt which is this one up there and I have a bunch of other Roma shirts as you can see all the way back there and I'm not even displaying them all. So yeah, uh, there is a, for me personally, there is, uh, just from the onset of it, a uh, clear bias towards Roma. I should have more than one thing, I'm not sure, though. I, I, I'm very readily admitting that uh, there's no question about it. Having only one fan or sure, not even one that I like all that much, is a little bit of a travesty and a blank spot in my collection. Um, but having said that, so from the onset, I've probably would lean a little lean more Roma because Roma is one of the teams that I really really like uh, but Feyenoord is not a team that I dislike by any means uh, and uh, especially coming from Austria there was always a special connection to Feyenoord you know Ernst Tappel first Austrian coach to win the European Cup as a coach of Feyenoord he made his name as at Feyenoord uh, there's still a lot to talk about I think there's also with most Feyenoord fans there's still this connection to uh, that Austrian period and now there's also an Austrian playing for Feyenoord and not any Austrian former Lusk captain and, and a true institution of Lusk despite him playing also a few seasons in Ried but he it's his town, he is from Linz, of course talking Gernot Trauner uh, in the defense for Feyenoord and after Oliver Glasner winning the Europa League, um, a former Lask coach also connected to it, it would be really, 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 really cool to see Gernot Trauner also lift the European trophy. Uh, but on the other, on the flip side, I think Roma is long overdue a European trophy and you know, Jose Mourinho has never won that one. Has never won that one, so I guess he will be, um, be extra careful. Um, before we go into it, where will this final uh, actually be played? Because that's always an interesting thing uh, to talk about. It will be played in the arena, and I'm gonna butcher this now. Uh, uh, com, uh, Competare in Tirana, in Albania first European final uh, taking place in Albania. Now, um, I guess I'm not alone in that one. I feel a little bit embarrassed. I mean, I read up, up for it. I do not know all that much about Tirana, except that it's the capital of Albania. Albania is one of those uh, countries within Europe that most Europeans, including me, don't know too much about, unfortunately. Um, but what I saw from the pictures, uh, it has a very interesting location. You know, it's on a plane, but there are the mountains rising behind it are uh, quite big. Uh, and the other thing that was surprising to me, that Tirana is a town that has uh, properly, I mean, although there have been settlements since the Iron Age in that area, uh, uh, Tirana properly was only found in 1614 under the Ottoman Empire. So I think that is interesting. What's also interesting is the stadium, uh, the Arena Combatare, uh, I call it now. Uh, it is a very slick looking stadium. It's a small stadium, I think only 25,000 uh, feet in there. Uh, but the way it looks, especially with um, uh, the architecture on the outside, you know, this kind of um, almost star-like feature of it with a big tower and then all uh, held in the Albanian colors of red, black, um, and a little bit white and then gray in there, the mosaic. Uh, it's a really fine looking stadium. And I think I've seen Albania play for us. Uh, in there, you know, uh, I think it's a very compact stadium and let's face it similar, I mean, similar to the Europa League final, I mean, both um, teams have sizable fan bases. 
Now, um, I wouldn't say that Roma fans are well known for traveling all over. However, Albania is right on the doorstep to Italy. I can imagine there are many, many Roma fans and I would even expect a slight Roma advantage in terms of fans. However, having said that, Feyenoord fans also pop up area. They are a traveling support uh, for sure. And I think it will be an absolutely amazing atmosphere between two rather, rather, rather big teams in the European context. But the funny thing is when you think um, Italy versus the Netherlands uh, on a club level, one is always so uh, tempted to uh, make the Italian team the favorite. However, I think on the grander scheme of things, Feyenoord is a bigger club than Roma. I'm not talking fan base. I think fan base, Roma has uh, Feyenoord beat probably. Uh, just for the same fact, it's from the Italian car capital. For me, Roma is probably the biggest team that has won nothing, in, uh, to say it a little bit over the top. Uh, they're a humongous club. I mean, uh, if the media coverage and so on is all over the moon in many ways. Uh, there are Roma talk shows left and right. However, the club is so focused on beating their rival Lazio every, every, every year. They are never, go, uh, they're hardly ever gunning for the Italian title, which they've only won three times. They have won one Fairs Cup a long time ago and they have lost all their previous finals in UEFA competitions. Flip side, Feyenoord, yes, number three in the Netherlands. However, they're the first Dutch team to win a European trophy, and that was the European Cup, and they were, and they were um, so they broke ground there. I made sure also. They have won all their European finals. And I think, I, I even want to say, uh, do they have a full collection? Uh, <laughs> I know that the European Cup and they have the UEFA Cup. Maybe they've won the UEFA Cup twice, but you know. Uh, yeah, UEFA Cup twice on 7th, 74 against uh, Spurs and then 2002 against Dortmund. So Fair is a big hitter. So they have won all their European files and Roma have lost all their European files, except for, as I said, the, uh, the first, the Fair's Cup. So uh, in that sense, the uh, while they may proclaim Roma as a favorite, they're maybe not as clear of a favorite. The history is not on their side. What comes in, in addition that Feyenoord is still unbeaten in this competition. Roma very prominently losing twice to Bordeaux. Which leads us now nicely is what is the pathway of these two teams to the final? Um, uh, I, I, I think it is, it's a very uh, interesting pathway overall. I gotta say, uh, Roma started, as I said, in the um, qualifying playoffs and uh, had to play the, uh, the newly crowned Turkish champions. Uh, at that time, we didn't know that, of course. Uh, Trabzonspor, which they uh, disposed of easily. And then they got, uh, one would say, a relatively easy group uh, with uh, ZSK Sofia, Bode Glimt and Zoria Luhansk. Uh, and they really easily disposed of uh, CSK and of Zoria uh, to start that group phase. However, then they ran against Bode Glimt and lost 1-6. Playing in the very beautiful dark blue jerseys, but that jerseys were cursed from that moment on. And I actually think that the Roma uh, team was a little bit born at that moment because uh, you remember... Um, with Jose Marino not playing the uh, first team squad and throwing then all the players that he played under 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 the under the bus and then you know got them out and uh, rejigged the squad. So kind of this was one uh, of those moments. And then of course, uh, so this was uh, against Bode. The other teams, I mean, yes, the away win to CSK was maybe not about the Soria easily beaten, and then uh, only two to go against Bode Klimp. And Bode Klimp uh, managed to not win that group. They gave Roma the win, which actually worked in Roma's uh, favor there. Then they had to play uh, Vitesse from the Netherlands and actually Roma have a pretty good record against Dutch teams overall. Uh, which yeah, 1-0 away, then a little bit nervy at home and then facing Bode Glimt again. Uh, being 1-0 up and then losing it late and you thought the, the, the worst, but then they finally get over the Bode Glimt hump and really dispose of them uh, emphatically. And then their first, you might wanna say, proper opponent from a big league. Because uh, if I look at it, yeah, Trapsons was Turkish champ uh, champions, but um, all the other teams, Bode is probably, uh, is surely the best one in there. And I don't wanna discount them. However, it's a Norwegian league and, you know, playing up there, a high north. 
it should not be uh, such a trouble for a big team like Roma. Leicester City was the first uh, team they had to play from a big nation, um, where they got a 1-1 away from home and then a relatively um, secure 1-0 at home at a raucous crowd. So Roma making it this way into the final. Now, similar to Rangers uh, in the uh, Europa League final, Feyenoord had nine uh, European pairings to manage before they even made it to the final. So another very, very long slog, starting in the second round of qualifying, where they beat Rita from uh, the Kosovo uh, rather tightly, but then against Luzern from Switzerland, of course, two or three nils, and then Elfsborg also. That's their only loss away, but uh, that was still in qualifying, so it doesn't necessarily count, it, it doesn't count by UEFA standards, but they have one little blimp there, they have one three loss away from home, but they had already 5-0 win against Elfsburg before. Uh, the group stage was actually a tricky and interesting group, uh, Maccabi Haifa, only 2-1 on a aggregate against Slavia Praha, remember that? It was also two rather tight affairs, 2-1 and 2-2, but they beat twice Union Berlin. Uh, and that actually, this win against Uni Berlin looks a whole lot better now than it probably did back then because Uni Berlin finished fifth in the Bundesliga. So it kind of gives you a little bit the level where uh, Feyenoord can play at, uh, especially when you consider that uh, Roma also are around, uh, I, I think, uh, I don't know now, but I think they finished uh, sixth uh, in the league table somewhere there. So. Um, you know, it's not that much, that big of a difference. Um, Feyenoord really came to life in the knockout stages and the Feyenoord games were uh, almost must watches. The 5-2 away from home uh, against Partizan, I think a game that twice trailed, um, especially with Cyril Dessas and Sinistera running wild. Uh, Slavia Praha is super entertaining 3-3 at home and then a uh, rather impressive 3-1 away from home. And also the first game against OM, uh, great atmosphere. Um, they had a 2-0 lead, maybe a little bit lucky, I must say, packed it back and then right after that to make it 3-2. And then they didn't concede. But they didn't score either as well. So uh, this was the more uh, defensively sound affair. Again, in the semifinals, one would say this is the first proper point, although the Union Berlin, they played against Union Berlin. And Union Berlin were hampered. They're not playing in the Alte Försterei, but in the Olympic Stadium, which is probably not their favorite ground to play at. Uh, so those are, those are the paths to the final. Um, who is the referee? The referee is Romanian referee Istvan Kovac. Now, uh, normally you don't hear much about Romanian referees, but he got rave reviews on his performance uh, at Manchester City against Real Madrid. He is one of UEFA's top referees. So I do expect uh, a really well refereed final and I hope not the whistle swallowing that we saw in the Europa League. I, ac I actually have more faith here than I had uh, with Slavko Vincic from B4. Now, the big question for as <laughs> always for me, what will be the jersey matchup? Here is my best guess. I think Roma will play in their home kit and probably in an all red one. And while I could see Feyenoord also pulling out their green uh, jerseys, I actually would love it. Uh, they are not open for sale. They were only for season ticket holders who did not return their money. Uh, they are really nice looking. I gotta say. I honestly think they will play in the grey ones because they had Euro uh, Conference League success in those. So uh, maybe not the flashiest of matchups, but however, you know I do not like grey jerseys, but as far as grey jerseys go, this is actually a really uh, nice one. So this is my guess. And again, if you have any uh, info on where I can find, uh, you know, a backed uh, <laughs> you know, a, 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 an approved version of who, how they will play, I would be very happy because I don't know where this information is publicly available. And it bugs me because this should be publicly available uh, who is ordered to play how. I, especially for a jersey nerd uh, like me, and I always like it. But I would expect Roma. I would love if Roma could play in the classic uh, red, white, black, but they will play in all red, and I would say that Feyenoord will play, will probably play in grey with uh, uh, with, the, with yellow pants. I think this uh, the uniform uh, is worn, but that's my best guess, and those predictions are sure to go wrong as far as I know. Um, 
the most interesting part for me from a player perspective is that of course two of the teams i mean those two teams are also the top scorers in the uh, com competition with Feyenoord scoring one more than roma they also have two of the best strikers in the competition with Tammy Abraham against Serial Dessers. Uh, and to me, it will really be more about um, can, which of the defenses can hold up better. Uh, because I think Feyenoord going forward is really, uh, really frantic. Whereas I think Roma is maybe not as free flowing for that. They're maybe a more stable team in that sense. But they always have a little bit of uh, a thing in there that could mess them up. Um, it is also uh, a chance for the first Italian title in a European competition since 2010. That's a whole long time for a country than when I started watching. Literally won at least one trophy every year. So, a um, whole lot of time. And last one is, who is of course the favorite? As I said, if I just look at the pure stats and at history, actually history would favor Ro uh, or, um, Rotterdam, <laughs> Feyenoord, <laughs> what a safe, um, would favor Feyenoord. However, uh, rating wise, Roma is just above Feyenoord. And so my model says there's a 53% chance of Feyenoord, uh, of Feyenoord, 53% chance of Roma. I'm getting ahead of myself. 53% chance of Roma winning that title. However, as I said, I think Roma have probably the overall better squad. They have the more proven coach. I'm not saying it's the better coach. They will have a loads of fans there. Um, however, there's something about this Feyenoord team that reminds me a lot of Eintracht Frankfurt as well. So I would not be, absolutely not be surprised if Feyenoord edged that one. I am personally really looking forward to this final. Um, there's really, I mean, I was looking forward most because of the fans to the Europa League final. This is my second one. Uh, the Champions League final, of course, is the big showcase case event, blah, 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 blah. But Liverpool, Real Madrid, although those are two big teams, is not as interesting to me as this one. This is the, you can put your name for the first time on a trophy. And it is a final between a really, really big team out of a big nation against a big uh, team in a European context. You cannot wish for more. You cannot wish for more. And for that reason, I'm really looking forward to that. As I said, I probably just uh, pure fandom. I am leaning a bit more towards Roma because uh, I really think this is a team that should win it. But um, I would also be happy if they not win it, especially since having Gernot Trauma on that squad. It would be really, really fun to see that as well. So, you know, again, split loyalties in many ways in any case uh please let me know what you think about this final who you think will win uh are you excited about it um and anything else that you want to drop please comment below give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more and i will talk to you soon bye hey there i really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe and with that have a wonderful day